Hi, we're talking about complex numbers, and they are numbers, so you are allowed to do number kinds of things with them. We can take two complex numbers and add them together to get another complex number. We can subtract them. We can multiply them. We can divide them. Let's talk about how. When you're adding complex numbers, you can kind of just pretend that the i is a variable, like x or y, and you're combining like terms. So you're adding together the real parts and combining the imaginary parts. So for example, 4 minus 9i plus 3 plus 2i equals 7 minus 7i. 4 plus 3 is 7, and the minus 9i plus 2i equals minus 7i. And that's it. That's all there is to adding. What about subtracting? Same idea, treat the i sort of as a variable, but remember we're subtracting the whole thing here, subtracting that second complex number. So we are subtracting 2, and we are subtracting the negative 4i. So 7 minus i minus 2 minus negative 4i, 7 minus 2 is 5, the minus i minus the minus 4i is plus 3i, and so that's the result, 5 plus 3i. Okay, what about multiplying complex numbers? Well, again, sort of think as, as if the i were any other variable. Multiply things out like with the FOIL method. So first we have 8 times 1 is 8. On the outside we have 8 times minus 2i is minus 16i. On the inside, we have minus 3i times 1 is minus 3i. And last, we have minus 3i times minus 2i is plus 6i squared. Then we can combine like terms in the middle. And remember what I said you can do with i squared. Anytime you see i squared, that's really just negative 1. So we don't want to leave that i squared in the answer. We want our answer to be in standard form with just a real part plus an imaginary part times i and nothing more after that. So to do that, we turn the i squared into negative 1, and then we got 8 minus 19i, and then the 6 times the negative 1 would be negative 6, and when we combine 8 and negative 6, we get 2. So multiplying together, 8 minus 3i times 1 minus 2i gets us the complex number 2 minus 19i. What about 5 minus i squared? Remember, we can't just distribute the exponents. Powers do not distribute over addition or subtraction. Instead, this means 5 minus i times itself, 5 minus i times 5 minus i, and what happens when you multiply out a binomial, something minus something else, you get the first thing squared, minus 2 times the first thing times the second thing, plus the second thing squared. So here that would be 5 squared, which is 25, minus 2 times 5 times i, so minus 10i, plus i squared, which is negative 1. And now, we can simplify this further because the 25 and the negative 1 add up to 24. So 5 minus i squared turns out to be 24 minus 10i. What about dividing? Okay, so there's a trick to this, and it's essentially the same trick that we used back in section 1.2. 5 when we were rationalizing denominators that had more than one term where one of them involved a square root. And we were trying to get rid of that square root, get it so the denominator didn't have any radicals. And the trick was we multiplied by almost the same thing but with a different sign in the middle, the conjugate. We're going to use that same trick here. We're going to treat this as 
a fraction where we're allowed to multiply by the same thing on top and on the bottom, because multiplying by something over itself is really just multiplying by one. And what we're going to multiply by is the conjugate of the denominator. Here, the conjugate of 3 plus i would be 3 minus 2i. So I'm multiplying by 3 minus 2i on top and on the bottom. Let's see what happens when we do that. On top, we've just got 26 times the whole quantity, 3 minus 2i. Remember, it's that whole thing that's getting multiplied by 26. And on the bottom, we have 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i. On top, when we multiply this out, 26 times 3 is 78, minus 26 times 2i is minus 52i. On the bottom, when we multiply this out, 3 times 3 is 9. The outside and the inside cancel out. One of them is negative 6i, and the other one's positive 6i, and those add up to 0. And then the plus 2i times the minus 2i is minus 4i squared. But whenever you see an i squared, that's really just negative 1. So down here we got 9 minus negative 4, which is 13. Remember, minus a negative is plus a positive. So now we have 78 minus 52i all over 13. So we can break that up into 78 divided by 13, which is 6, minus 52 divided by 13, which is 4 times the i. So the answer turns out to be 6 minus 4i. And with division, we can check by multiplying. Remember, division is the inverse of multiplication. If I asked you, what is 10 divided by 2, and you said 5, I could check by thinking, okay, do I really take 2 times 5 to get back 10? So here I can check this. Do I really take 3 plus 2i times 6 minus 4i? to get back 26. Well, let's multiply that out and see. What do you get from 3 plus 2i times 6 minus 4i? First, you get 3 times 6 is 18. Outside, you get minus 12i. Inside, you get plus 12i. And last, you get minus 8i squared. The minus 12i plus 12i add up to 0. The i squared is negative 1. So here we've got minus a negative 8, which is the same as plus a positive 8, and then 18 plus 8 is equal to 26. It checks out. Let's try another one with division to make sure we know how this works. I'm going to divide 4 minus 9i by 4 plus 3i. Careful, we can't like divide out 4s or 3s or anything like that because those aren't common factors of the entire numerator or the entire denominator. So what we are going to do, remember the trick, we're multiplying the top and the bottom both by the conjugate of the denominator, the thing we're dividing by, which here would be 4 minus 3i. So when I multiply the numerator, the original numerator 4 minus 9i, times 4 minus 3i, when I FOIL that out, I get 16 minus 12i minus 36i plus 27i squared. Meanwhile, on the bottom, I get 16 minus 12i plus 12i minus 9i squared. Let's simplify those. The numerator simplifies into 16 Combine the i terms and get minus 48i. Turn the i squared into a negative 1 and get minus 27. The denominator simplifies into 16. The i terms cancel each other out. Turn the i squared into negative 1, and then this would be minus a negative or plus a positive 9. Combine like terms. The 16 minus 27 is negative 11, and down here the 16 plus 9 is 25. So we've got 
negative 11 minus 48i over 25. And we're pretty much done. The real part is negative 11 over 25. And the imaginary part is negative 48 over 25 that's being multiplied by the i. In the next video, we're going to go back and solve some more quadratic equations. And it's going to turn out that the solutions are complex numbers. Now that we know what those are and how to deal with them, hey, solutions can be complex numbers. So see you in the next video, which we'll look at examples of that.